Is uh, Gigi available to play? And if so, uh, will he start? <laughs> yeah. Considering yeah. the circumstances of the game, the, you know, the yeah. lack of goals, etc. Uh, well, he, he might be available. Uh, it's just a matter of how many minutes he's available. That's that's what we're looking at. Um, so yeah, that's what we're evaluating with the with the sports science um, sports science department, and we will we will see. Does the fact that the team is struggling to score factor into his minutes, his available, how much he can play? Well, yes, but at the same time, I don't want to to put him at danger of re injured, and uh, that I won't do. So yeah, of course. Um, we're missing some goals, we're missing some things, but we're creating. And, uh, and yeah, we'll see. Uh, again, I don't want to put him at danger and and be, you know, uh, too ambitious with that. Because if, if I put him in danger and then I lose him for more period of that, that's going to hurt even more the team. So I need to be cautious with that, but uh, we, will, we will discuss that with the sports science department and, and we'll make the right decision. The winless streak is at nine. I assume pressure is building, but at what point does the pressure just, you just say to heck with it and you just don't feel any pressure anymore and you just kind of do what you do? Uh, the pressure is always there when it goes well. It, there is pressure to keep going. There is pressure to be better. There is always pressure. Uh, I would say, yeah, at times there is a bit more. Um, but um, for us, is you know, at times when you're under pressure, you make a... Uh, you start to make uh, bad decisions. You start that pressure to get into your head, and then you know you start stressed to be stressed, and and then you make the wrong decisions. I have, and we all have to be clear of mind. We all have to make the right decisions off the field, on the field, also. Like there's some, you know, a lot of willingness to do well, and then that is stress us, and then maybe we're in front of goal and we're not scoring because of that big desire we have to score the goal, and then that overpass you a little bit and I want just to be uh, a good balance between big desire, big ambition to, to win, to get out of the situation. But at the same time, we have to be clear of mind. We have to be in control of our emotions as well, you know? So that's what we are trying to do, trying to be balanced in that sense. But of course, there's urgency, there's desire to get out of the situation. Is the team's, uh, I can't remember his title, the psychologist guy, yeah. is he helping? Y'all try to work with the players on finding that sweet spot you just spoke about? Well, yes, just, just to be clear, he's, he's not just on the performance side of things, uh -huh. of course, you know, he's also on the personal side and he has private conversation regardless of the situation of the team, of the situation of the players, he's always available. So even when he's not here in the building, he's uh, working with them, uh, phone calls, uh, Zoom calls and trying to get them better not just to perform better, but to be better person, better human beings, to be better mentally. Uh, so yeah, he's continue working normal. I wouldn't say anything more than normal. Of course, I have sometimes phone calls with him, trying to, of course, trying to ask him a couple of questions on the message and that, how certain things can be delivered a bit better. But yeah, he's been normal, I would say. Gonzalo, have you had, at every, at every level of the sport, you know, losing or just not scoring or struggling, a player can feel that lack of confidence. Have you had to make sure that they don't lose confidence in, in your message, in your idea, in your philosophy that what we're doing is working? That has to be difficult on them when they're not getting the results. Yeah, it can be. It can be as part of the sports. I have the luxury of being also a former player, so I know the emotions. I know what happens when you are not getting the results. Uh, but I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening. You saw the other day, I felt like, um, you know, uh, we were playing okay, uh, but then the red card came and then the team pushed even more. With one man down, we push, we create a couple of good chances. We create also in the first half, but the chances we create in the second half probably were a bit more over overwhelming with one man down. So that tells me that the players haven't lost their confidence in the belief in the team, not just in me, but it's in the process, in the team, in the team philosophy. I don't think that's happening. So, yeah. Um, but we have to continue message, uh, messaging the team that, of course, we want to get out of the situation and we need to keep going. We just need to keep going, put the head down, keep working, keep grinding, keep, uh, keep uh, uh, doing the things that we're doing because 
when you look at the performances, uh, Felipe, I think we are we are not close to the amount of points that we are receiving. I think the performances have been way better for what the points say. But of course, we are in a situation where the goals that probably shouldn't be conceded are being conceded, and the goals that should be scored are not being scored. And that's where you define the, the points. So uh, we just need to do better there. And uh, But we're in that moment where uh, we just need to keep going, keep trying, keep uh, creating chances, keep going with that. And then eventually everything is balanced. Sometimes you have to, as you know, who said, uh, you have to drink a bit of poison, you know? And, uh, and at the end of the days, everything is balanced when you uh, believe in the process and in what you're doing. So we are in that process of continue what we're doing, trying to do it better, especially in the in the boxes where I think we need to to do a little bit better. But uh, yeah, again, we lost a couple center backs, we lost a couple of strikers. Now that they are getting back into the system, hopefully we do their uh, better in those boxes. Uh, in between those boxes, I think we've been okay. Not excellent, but we've been better than the opponents in general. So um, it's just about that. It's about uh, having everyone back, everyone reintegrated, fully fit and trying to perform at the same caliber. Do you still do you feel fully supported by the front office? I mean, you mentioned recently it's about stopping the bleeding. Is that a collective throughout the facility? Like that's the first goal or is it, has that changed, do you think? Not at all. Um, I'm working normal. I'm, my daily routine is the same. Uh, I'm working really hard with, along my coaching staff. Um, putting the hours in the building that we need to put in, preparing the players the best we can. But yeah, we have good communication with Carlos almost every day. We talk about things, about situations, about what I'm thinking for the games and that. So yeah, everything's been normal. And how do you just, just personally, there's a lot of noise, like at this level and around the world, when, when, a, when a good team is not winning, that's when the noise begins. How have you managed that personally to like zone it out and focus on the team? I don't listen. I don't listen to the noise. I put my 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 AirPods, and then I put some classic music and uh, some opera music, and I work and I keep working and I watch the games of the opponent. I watch our games. I watch our sessions. I plan my message to my teammates, to my to my colleagues, to my staff, to my to my players, and I try to do it at a high level. That's what I do. So I I know what what probably is being said, I haven't read, I haven't hear, uh, but I know what is normal. You know, when you're not doing good, they're gonna talk bad about you. Um, so it is normal. Uh, but yeah, that doesn't distract me from my job and I'm trying to do it as, as much as, ca as I can. What's, what's the takeaway from the last matchups with Inter Miami? What needs to change knowing that they're gonna be at full strength the most, most likely the midfield may look a little bit changed with Pelon possibly coming in. What's been the scouting report like? Well, they, uh, you said the last game they played or the last, last game we played game against them? The last game that you guys played. Well, that, that is positive vibes. We beat them 5-2. <laughs> so the last game we played against them, we, we, we played better. We were good. Uh, they didn't have Messi, but pretty much they have the full squad, if I remember right. Um, and yeah, um, this team is a little bit different because now they added uh, Luis Suarez, who's another top, top player uh, up front. Um, the connection those four have, uh, Messi, Busquets, Suarez and Jordi Alba, it's incredible. It's something that, of course, is, is, uh, is four guys that have been playing together for a long time and then they just need a couple of connections to make magic happen, right? So uh, we know that, we're aware of that. We know the game plan. Uh, the players know what we have to do. Number one, we, we need the ball. We need the ball. And that's what we did in the last game. We took the ball away from them and then we scored five goals. So that was a good good plan. I think uh, going there is pivotal that we keep the control of the game, especially because of the weather, of the circumstances, of the surroundings, of the expectations of the fans. So, so we need to have the control of the game and don't let them have the control of the game. Whether it is we are defending, we have to be also in control when we are defending. Uh, but when we're on the ball, we have to make sure that that we have good sequences of possession, good sequences of attacking, and we put some, we play some questions to their back line as well. So we just need to have a very complete game because, of course, they are a, 
a very good squad at the moment the best in the conference so we need to put together a very good performance anything specific with Messi I mean they, you, you know the story what do you do do you box him in do you let him know you're there do you man mark him What's, is there a solution? Is there something that you're thinking about ahead of this match? Yes, yes, and my players know. That my players know what, what we're going to try as always is, you know, at times he's just trying to limit uh, the danger they can cause you because he's the best at the moment and, uh, and we just need to limit the factors and, and the connections he may have because he's not the only player on the field. He's probably the most talented player for Miami, but there are other players that are making a lot of runs. Taylor makes good runs in behind. Uh, Jordi Alba makes good runs, good runs in behind. Of course, Suarez, of course, Rojas, uh, Kremashi, um, Gressel, good delivery from, from the flank. I mean, they have so many threats that it's not just Messi, but you you have to have a plan in place. We have that, and hopefully it works. It's time for a few more. Madison, Jason, and um, you have a lot of key players returning. Derek Williams being one of them. How does that impact the strategy going into tomorrow's game? Yes, it, it impacts. Um, of course, there's always this understanding that when they are coming back from injuries, they are limited in certain ranges of minutes. Um, depends on the player. Uh, the time that they spend away from training regularly uh, takes place into also how many minutes, but having them back, of course, is good also for the mental side of things. I think you guys have noticed how much Stian Gregerson playing 20 minutes in one game impacted the whole building and the whole team just with uh, just with his presence. So at times it's just those 20 minutes from some players that are coming back, some 30 minutes, some 60 minutes. It's just very important for the mentality of the team. Oh, oh we are again, we are again uh, to full, close to be full strength. So that is positive. In a game like this one, how do you strike the balance between the opponent and their quality and staying true to the way that you want to play with this group? Yeah, I, I would say that, especially this year, we we try to message much more about us than any other opponent. It is the case that now we're facing Inter Miami and they are in first place and they have Messi and Luis Suarez and Jordi Alba and Busquets, but. Um, but we are trying to focus on us. We're trying to focus on us. Of course, we have a game plan, uh, but not just to stop them. It's a plan to try to do well in there, um, uh, but also being a smart, being a smart in that field, because we know the circumstances, we know how it goes, we know, you know, the vibe that is in that building when Messi is on the field and the fans and all these and the heat, the humidity. So we just need to be smart and understanding what type of game is the one that put us in the right place to win. And uh, and yeah, I think the players understand the, the game plan and it's just a matter of execution. I'm assuming Josh is going to start in goal. Does having him in goal change anything about building out of the back compared to having Brad in goal? Not, not really. We haven't uh, messaged anything differently. Honestly, he's been very good. He's been improving a lot in the in the in the you know in the positioning of himself because more than anything at times is the positioning to be aware of the surroundings and and the angles that he is taking. He's a left footed, so he's in that sense even the same. Um, his range of pass in certain areas that we like to unbalance the opponent are are very good, uh, and it's just a matter of at times just. But uh, but he's doing very good. Uh, we haven't changed in the Open Cup games that he's playing normal. Um, so yeah, we expect uh, pretty much the same. And what opera? Sorry. What opera do you listen to? <laughs> just Pavarotti and some of those. But I put just an opera playlist that I have. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you.